Tomato, a Long Island potato. Oh, yes. Dear Martin Pulaski, you were almost tough your whole life. You had a wonderful smile, and now I am going deaf. Technology allows me to hear. Hearing aids save the day, but my right ear is half deaf. You were wholly deaf. You wrote notes to share your thoughts and soul to the woman you loved and to your family, my grandmother. You had a great sense of humor and you were always teasing each other. And I have learned through my deaf group at my college that humor is how we deal with going deaf or being deaf, for humor is a way to cope. Your oldest daughter is hard of hearing, but she is too stubborn to get hearing aids. She is my mother, but your oldest daughter. You taught her that deaf was normal. You never complained. You always had a wonderful smile, but I don't remember hearing your voice. So I'm glad to learn that you had a supportive family and wife. My mom remembered your daughter, that you went deaf when she was in the second grade, and now your grandson is going deaf. You lost your hearing in your 30s. So thank you, Grandpa Martin Pulaski, for being a role model for me, for being my spiritual guide as I go deaf later in my life. In your honor, Grandpa Martin Pulaski, is to allow everyone to hear, to have Medicare, Medicaid, pay for hearing aids. I'm doing this documentary in your memory to honor your life. And I am so thankful that you are a part of me as I go onward onto my journey of hard of hearing. Thank you so much for being there for when I needed you the most. I just remember Grandma Plasky more with her cabbage rolls and she'd make us peanut butter toast and hot chocolate. But I just remember how Grandpa Plasky was very kind. I think he'd, we'd sit on his lap. That was always a treat to just spend time with them and cuddle with them and sit on his lap. You said you were in second grade when Grandpa went deaf. Do you remember anything? Well, just that he couldn't hear. How did you feel about that? Sad. What was so sad about it? Well, it was a lack of communication with someone you loved very much. Do you remember his voice? I would remember it. Do you remember his smile? I remember a lot about my father. What do you remember? That he was a very nice, patient man. And he loved his family very much. He was a great example as a father and a husband. Hi, Matthew. Hi. Today we're going to talk about uh, deaf and hard of hearing. I would like to uh, ask you about how you became uh, deaf or hard of hearing. My name is Matthew Hickel, and I'm a student at University of New Mexico in the Interdisciplinary Fine Arts Program at UNM, and my discipline is theater and film. I started school about two years ago. I have previous degrees, so I am able to finish my college degree in two years. And I've been a nurse for 30 years, and I'm near retirement. And my retirement plan was to form my own theater company and get back into the industry, period. Two major things have gotten in the way 
and that is going deaf and the pandemic. I think one of the questions you originally told me to think about was how has going deaf been positive for me? How have I made that work to better my life? And I really have to be honest, and my first reaction is, well, none. <laughs> it really made me kind of flip how I thought about going deaf. I really see it as a sense of loss. It's one of our five senses, and that sense is disappearing from my life. I'm still grieving. I've had hearing aids for two years, and when this process of going deaf started, it was really mild hearing loss. My brother was standing behind me, and this is very normal for people who are going deaf and they don't know it. Um, my brother's standing behind me, and I cannot hear him. And he taps me on the shoulder, and I turn around, and he goes, didn't you hear a word I said? And I said, no, no, I, I did not. And he said, I think you're going deaf. You need to, you know, go to the doctor and find out about your hearing loss. What do you want counselors to know about working with those who are living with a disability or a hearing loss? I think they need to know that it is a huge sense of loss. Um, it's one of the five senses you're losing. And when you start losing your hearing, you use your other senses to compensate. And a good example of that is lip reading. And you really focus on that more than you realize. And then the second concept I mentioned is with more significant hearing loss, your brain starts making up words that you think you're hearing when you're really not. And to maybe train counselors to recognize that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, I mentioned with each of us being individual, there's, I could not hear the letter F, but I learned from my accommodation advisor, Tommy at UNM, that really hearing people don't hear F as well. It's one of the consonants. Uh, hearing people think they hear the word F, but they don't. It's their brain and their lip reading has recognized it. The third thing is the ableism that you talked about of how the hearing world is prejudicial against hard of hearing and deaf people. Mm -hmm. And another example is I had a patient and uh, he goes, what's wrong with you? Can't you hear me? Are you deaf? And I said, well, yeah, actually I am. Oh, I get the deaf nurse today. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you do, you know? So uh, back off and just be a little bit nicer. As an individual living with hearing loss, is there anything that you want to learn uh, with the counselor within your treatment plan? Yeah, I think really working with the counselor and realizing that the world becomes a more difficult place to live in. You know, the bigger picture is how to teach society that how we over depend on our hearing. So my name's Tommy Tejeda, Tommy Lynn Tejeda. Um, I am the Associate Director of Deaf and Hard of Hearing Services here at UNM's Accessibility Resource Center. Um, I'm an alumni of UNM. I graduated in 2003 with a degree in sign language interpreting and a degree in psychology. I've been working here since 2006 as a full-time staff interpreter and in May of 2020 I became the interim associate director and then in April of 2021 I became permanent associate director. So the question I have is what is good from this from losing your hearing and becoming deaf? Um, I think I think it's interesting because that's a great question and it's really interesting because um, the journey of becoming hard of hearing is very different of the journey of the people who are born hard of hearing and are like have a stable low level of hearing for their lives compared to the people who are born profoundly deaf and you know are deaf throughout their lives so um, they're all different journeys and they all navigate the world differently depending on um, 
their family who's around them, the type of support they receive, whether it be sign language or more of an oral approach, um, and just those experiences. So when you're born with a low level of hearing or profoundly deaf, then that's just how you are and that's how the world has always been. And there's nothing to grieve. There's frustrations of navigating a hearing world without hearing, there, there is, there are frustrations, but they don't have that grieving process. So, so your journey and others like you of, of having the experience of losing your hearing, you do have that grieving process. And you have that, you know what it is to have full hearing, and now you know what it is to not. And that's a huge change. And so um, at the beginning of the grieving process, it is hard to identify the positive things that can come of this. Um, that's for sure. Um, it's interesting, this concept of deaf gain that has been developed by the deaf community to, to kind of battle that idea of, or to balance out that idea of hearing loss. Because people who are born or who, or at a very young age, have lost their hearing, um, they feel fine about it. They don't feel like they're less of a person or incomplete or need to be fixed. They feel like they, they are, that's just who they are, and that's just how they are. And um, so, but yet they're constantly framed by society as like, oh, you have hearing loss, you don't have something the rest of us have, you don't have something you should have had. And they're thinking, well, I'm kind of normal for me. <laughs> and so that's a, that's a different, different experience. So they want to kind of, instead of always being seen at that, as through that frame of, of um, being lesser than or needing to be fixed or being impaired, they, they bring up this idea of deaf gain. Now deaf gain is really interesting because it's, if you, you can think about it on an individual level, but you can also think about it on a societal level of like um, things that are in place in order to support deaf or hard of hearing people that everyone can benefit from, like, like captioning. So closed captioning, if you think of the tired mother who just wants to watch her shows, but her baby is sleeping, she can put it on mute and turn on the captions and watch her shows still. All right, and I'm at the end of my documentary, but really it's the beginning. And what I've learned from it is I am grieving um, my hearing loss. And this helped me work through the process of grieving. It is a struggle. It will continue to be a struggle, uh, dealing with um, ableism, uh, people who kind of make fun of you when you're deaf or hard of hearing. And I've experienced that already early on in my journey and I'm more aware of it. And learning just how to deal with the feelings of going deaf and not knowing when it's gonna happen. As I've proven in the documentary, my feelings have been validated by Tommy, the accommodation specialist, who said I have the hardest journey of losing my hearing because I know what I'm losing and that's what I'm sad about. Um, I'm going deaf and there's no estimate as to when the hearing in my right ear will be completely gone. Right now my hearing aids work well, but some days are better than others. I started this thinking it's a loss of hearing and then I've learned through this journey in the documentary and through Olivia and the people in my deaf support group and through Tommy, the accommodation specialist at UNM, that I'm also experiencing deaf gain. The birds are louder and more beautiful with my hearing aids and I'm more intuitive to lip reading and to listening to people when they talk. I notice in my deaf support group, uh, we really focus in on what we are saying and truly are listening to each other. And I see that listening ability disappearing in the hearing world. So I hope you've learned something on my journey as I have. And it's just beginning. We know God of the banana today. <laughs> Thank you.